He's one of those people that a lot of people wanted to copy. Day two of our advent calendar. Thank you for all the positive comments about the Michael Brecker episode yesterday. This one will probably be a bit shorter today because I've got a lot on. I'm teaching today. I've then got a gig with a band I've never played with before in a venue I've never played with before. That happens a lot, but it still kind of makes me slightly apprehensive. I like to know what's happening next. I've also got a gig tomorrow I need to prepare for. We're in London for a lunch with the family and then hopefully go to Hamley. So hopefully tomorrow's advent calendar will also be really interesting, but let's get on with Today's apologies for the mess over here. By the way, I have got my Christmas tree up. Paul Desmond wanted his alto to sound like the sound of a dry martini. I love that line. He also had a way of kind of, you know, showmanship in terms of being able to sell things over. Well, little known fact, well, maybe more widely known than I think, but I didn't know it until I did my research for this episode, was that him and Brubeck initially didn't get on with each other. And um, the story goes that... Um, Desmond showed up at Brubeck's house. Brubeck told his wife not to let him in. Brubeck was out in the garden. His wife let him in. Um, Desmond basically begged to be able to be back into Brubeck's band. He's one of those people that a lot of people wanted to copy. He's one of those sounds that, dare I say, was more commercially successful. Think about like Stan Getz's sound as well. That kind of more subtone, uh, airy sound, you might call it, if you weren't a saxophone player. The Take Five is one of those tracks that a lot of people know uh, you know it's been used in commercials and things like that I mean I think the first time I heard it again I'm, I, I've said this before about like Cantley by Island how I first heard that in an advert uh, I heard first heard Take 5 I think there was a chocolate bar called Take 5 or something similar like that now a lot of people of course equate Take 5 with Dave Brubeck but it was written by Desmond and the interesting story goes is that he actually wrote the bridge first uh, and you know, it was the other way around it was the B section first followed by the A section and it was Brubeck who suggested to Desmond that they should play what what Desmond had written as the bridge as the opening head and that's how the song ended up coming out it's an interesting solo to study it's very sparse um, it's um, pretty harmonically quite simple but it's a great way to try and take in that tone and that those inflections you know one of the things i'm always talking to students about is the importance in transcription of not just getting the notes down it's getting how the guy played the notes how he accented how he what he didn't play what does you know, do those kind of things and often when you're trying to get that desmond sound if you're playing take five in public people expect you to be able to play it like Desmond, although I do remember going to hear Dave Brubeck in Manchester in around about 2002 and Bobby Mathelio was on alto that day and what I loved about Bobby Mathelio was that he, he was kind of a combination of Paul Desmond which he you know he brought the kind of the Desmond ideas and tone but also had bagfuls of Cannonball Adderley and Charlie Parker and obviously his own stuff as well uh, and I actually dare I say enjoyed listening to the Bobby Mathelio version probably more than the Desmond version. Today marks day 150 of my chain it's nice to see that uh, it's catching on for other people. Um, yeah, we'll leave it there. Um, but uh, up to day 150 of practice, I got to I think 163 last time, so I need to kind of push through December, uh, and I will break my my thing from last time. It's not necessarily about the importance of breaking it for me personally. I am competitive. It will be my target is to get to 200, which will be the 21st of January. 200 days of consecutive practice will really it just focuses the mind, gets me practicing. It's like today, I know I've got a lot to do. I've got to make this vlog for you guys. I've got the lessons to do. I've got gigs to do tonight, but I know I need to practice as well. So. I better crack on with it now. It's amazing what a difference a week can make in a rehearsal. Last week I left here, I was so despondent and ready for quitting. And today, whoa, these these teenagers play very, very well. Drummer particularly is it's like a young Tony Williams. And Tony Williams was always young, I'm trying to get him to come and play. Unfortunately, he can't come and play the jam session tomorrow night. That would have been really good. Anyway, last night I managed to spill a glass of wine. So I need to go to home base now and pick up some paint.
Yeah, well, that's what we're going to have. <laughs> Thank you very much. Thank you. Bye bye. I guess we'll find out when it dries how close this actually really is. It's hard to tell A because it's yellowy light in here and B we need to let the paint dry but if not the dew looks up is wrong. Can you twist round? Yeah. <laughs> We're just editing his drums from the other vlog here. Uh, just teaching him some very basic video editing haven't we? Yeah? What's the song you did? Jingle Bell Rock. Yeah. Here we go. Washed out. So I need to get ready as I was just saying to Charlie then. I have got 20 minutes to get shaved ready for this gig. Uh, get my saxophones packed away and start editing this vlog so that it kind of gets out at some point tomorrow. Which will be today. For you. you know what I mean. really wanted a change of, well hair particularly is getting too long and um, I wanted to grab my beard out again. The problem is I've got to reshoot these interviews now again. They've decided to come up with a day. So for continuity I've got to stay looking exactly the same. Feel a bit more professional now. But I just do my flies up. <laughs> Always carry a tie, a black tie. Nothing else, just a tie. On the gig, I'll try and make it look half decent because I'm in the dressing room. It's a really weird, it's a really nice gig, but a really weird venue and setup and everything. So, um, it's a really typical smelling band room, this. I'm going to call it a day here for the vlog. Thank you very much uh, for watching. Make sure you check out which way do I do it? I do it this way, don't I? This was yesterday's vlog with Michael Brecker, and this is what I was up to this time last year. I will see you tomorrow with another new saxophone player on our advent calendar. Bye bye!